In this video series, I'm going to show you how to use OpenAI's newest model, GPT-4.0, in Flutterflow. In this first video, we'll do three things. First, we'll import OpenAI's API library. Second, we'll configure our API calls. And third, we'll model the data that's returned from OpenAI so it's type safe and easy to work with. In the second video, we'll talk about how to structure your data in the back end, design the page, and then implement the logic. Okay, let's jump into Flutter. Flow. So first, let's import the API library from OpenAI. And you do that right here with this button because Flutterflow supports importing Swagger or OpenAPI specs so that you don't have to individually import each call. Now, OpenAI gives us their whole API library if you go to this link. So here we are, and what you want is this openapi.yaml file. And then you can just come down to this download raw file button. Great. Let's jump back into Flutter. Flow. Now you can just import that file here. Beautiful. So it's imported those APIs as a group here, and you can see there's a lot of them. So let's move to our next step, configuring these. The first step is to set your API key. So let's go jump over to OpenAI at this URL to get our API key. Let's come over here to API keys and create a new secret key. Give it a name, and we'll keep all the rest of the defaults. Now, this will be the only time that you see this key, so make sure you keep it somewhere secure. If you do lose it, you can just delete that key and and generate a new one. Okay, let's go jump over to Flutterflow. Now the way that OpenAI has structured their API library when you import it is they put the authorization headers on each individual call. Now, if you're only using one call, that's fine, but if you're using multiple, it's better to put it in the header section of the group. So if you have to change it, you don't have to repeat it in a bunch of locations. So we can put it here, beautiful, and save it. Next, we need to secure the API key by routing these requests through a cloud function. This ensures that the API key will never be exposed in requests made by the client. Now, this will use Firebase Cloud functions, so make sure you have Firebase set up, and I've left a link in the description to walk you through that. Once that's done, you can go into Advanced Group Settings and turn on Make Private. Once you can save it, this Deploy Private API section will appear, and then just click Deploy. Great. And now that'll be propagated down to all of the headers whenever you use any of these calls. Next step in our configuration of these calls, let's go into the one that we're going to use in this demo, the create chat completion endpoint. This is the main endpoint that you're going to use when you send a prompt to OpenAI to get a response. Now, we're not using this authorization header because we just added it to the group, so we can delete that. Next, let's come over to our variables right here, and it had added an API key, and we already added that, so we can just delete that variable. Great. Now, let's come over to our body. Now, OpenAI imports every property that's available to you, and we don't need a lot of these. So you're going to want to come in here and clean up and just use the properties that you're going to need. And of course, if you're looking for what are the necessary properties, you can jump over to the documentation here. So let's go take a look at that. So we're in the API reference right here, and we're looking at the chat endpoint. And they've got some great documentation here, and you can see that any property that is required is tagged with this red required field. They also give you really nice examples of the different types of calls that you're going to be doing. So it looks like here all we need for a simple successful call is this array of messages and the model we want to use. That would be like GPT 3.5 or 4 or for this video 4.0. All right so let's clean up our call. So we know we need this messages array. We know we need the model right here but everything else we can get rid of for this demo. Great. That's all we need. Let's give it a format. All right, great. Now we're not using this model here. So let's go look at what's the exact syntax for this new model. So here's this model property and you can see the endpoint compatibility table right here. Next, you can come over here to GPT-4.0 and you can see these are the models right here. Now at the time of this recording, this is the one you want to use. So let's copy this and paste it into Flutterflow. Okay, so let's replace this GPT-4 term turbo with this new model. Beautiful. And let's save those changes. Next, let's deal with this messages array right here. So first, let's look at what the API is expecting. So this messages array will be where you're sending your prompts. But it's more than that because it's a list of the messages comprising the conversation so far. Because when you're using these models, these are back and forth conversations. So there's a history to it. So each 
subsequent question or comment that you make should be added to this array and sent off to ChatGPT. And you can see the structure of this over here in this example. So you've got your messages array and this is ordered sequentially. So this is the first message in the conversation and this is the second one. So the first one is your indication to ChatGPT about what role it should take. You're telling the system of ChatGPT and you're telling it you are a helpful assistant. And of course, you want to adapt this for your business use case. So if you're designing an app for an auto shop, you would want to indicate that here. Like, you are an assistant for an auto shop. Giving it that context will help guide the model in the response in both the content and the form of communication. So using the right words for the content. The next message in here would be the first message that you send off. So this is whatever the user first writes. Then after you get a response from ChatGPT, you would add this to this array as the third item in this array and so on and so forth. So let's get back into Flutterflow and see how we're going to construct this array. So because this will be dynamic data, we want to define a variable for this. So let's add a variable and we'll call it messages. And this will just be a JSON object. That is when we actually get to building this, we will have to construct that array in the process of our conversation. Then we will pass that array of objects in here. So we can just delete this right here because we'll be constructing it ourselves and drop it in. Beautiful. All right, so let's save this and test it out. All right, so before we test this call, we need to add in our messages value right here. So let's just go back to the documentation and use the example from there. So I'll just grab this array right here and copy that. And then we can paste this in here. Make sure that this is clicked on here, which will make sure that this variable will be included in the body of the request or wherever your variable is used. All right, so let's test this API call. Beautiful, and there's our response. And we can see in the response here down in this messages is we get the actual substance of our response right here in this content and it says hi there how can I assist you today that's great okay this step is done next step is to model our data well what does that mean well we get this response and we want to make sure that this response is easy to use and we can do that by creating a custom data type based on this response and it's real easy to do so we're just going to command or control a to copy this then come over to our data types over here and use this option so that we can just import that response and Flutterflow will automatically create data types based on that response. So we'll just call this GPT response and we'll paste it in here, then create and look at that. Just like with our response, we have all of the fields mapping to that response. So down here we have choices, which is where the actual response we're expecting comes in. But the fascinating thing is Flutterflow has done something cool. So it's not only made data types for that response, but whenever it needs a nested data type, so here in our choices, and we need that because when we come in here and we test it, you can see that we've got this choices and this choices also has an array of objects. So we need more data types in here. And so it's created that for us. So here's our get response right here. Then that's a list of choices down here and inside we've got our messages which is of type message which comes down to here and there's our role and our content beautiful so we've imported the library we've configured it and we've modeled our data coming back from OpenAI. in the next video we'll structure our backend to receive this data design the ui and implement the logic let us know if you have any questions on this and we'll see you in that video Visual development redefined. Flutter flow the visual way to code. Building apps, no sweat, no overload. The overload.